All right, everybody, what I have right here is a fig leaf melon. The coloring on the outside and the shape of it makes it look like it's a watermelon of some kind or some sort of melon, but in actuality, this is a squash. And actually, a lot of the names for this thing have melon in the name. The most common name for this thing that I've been seeing is fig leaf melon, and it's called that because the leaves of this, uh, of this fruit resemble the leaves of a fig tree. Makes sense. It also has the name Seven Year Melon because these have like a crazy long shelf life. This is from America, you know, from all parts of America, from North America, Central America, South America. In Central America, there's a dish called Dolce de Chela Coyote. Totally butchering it. Uh, where they basically take this, they cut into wedges, and they candy it. I'm going to try to do that. Even though this is native to America, it's actually used quite heavily throughout Asia as a shark fin substitute, because I guess it has a very similar texture to it. I'm going to also try that. The, uh, the seeds on the inside are also edible, and people like roast them and candy them. They use them kind of like uh, you would use peanuts. Gonna try that too. So there's a lot of things I want to do with this thing, but uh, first off, let's try it fresh. The rind on this thing, when it matures, is very, very hard. Although I've heard that if you have like the unripe fruit, you can use the rind in uh, in dishes and it's edible. But this one's ripe, so the uh, the rind on it is pretty tough. You don't want to eat it. And I've also heard that there are two varieties out there. One has black seeds and one has white seeds. I have the one that has black seeds. That's kind of cool looking. It looks a little bit like, I guess like a little bit like watermelon. Like the, the seeds actually look very similar to watermelon. The flesh is very stringy. You can see those little strings in there, and I guess like that is what's desirable about the it being a shark fin substitute, is that it kind of like separates apart into little strings. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Um, definitely want to cook it. If you've ever like made a jack-o-lantern and you've taken like some of that pulp on the inside and you just like ate a little bit of it completely like raw it's kind of what you get here uh, there is like a slight sweetness to it mmm yeah not super good fresh but uh, people don't eat it fresh usually so let's uh, let's see what we can do with this thing to make it palatable okay so let's make some fake shark fin soup I don't know what real shark fin soup tastes like, honestly, uh, but from what I hear, it's not about the flavor, it's about the texture. I don't know what the texture is like either. Here is a pot of water that I am currently bringing to a boil. It's about two and a half liters of water. I'm going to take these carrots, I've got eight of them, eight small carrots, and I'm going to cut them up. And a lot of the recipes I've been looking at uh, actually call for meat, because even for meat eaters, it's still considered to be pretty unethical. You know, it's not, uh, not such a cool thing to kill the sharks. But also, shark fins are very expensive. So even if you don't give crap about the sharks, you might not want to spend, like, ridiculous amount of money just for the texture of something. So yeah, I'm going to take uh, a different spin on a few of the different recipes that I've found. First thing, carrots go in the pot. I'm going to use some miso. Two tablespoons, maybe. Next, this is a can of peanuts that I filled with bean curd. I don't know how much this is, probably like a cup or two. Okay, and I am just cutting these into little wedges just like that. I'm gonna let this uh, sit in here for one hour. Yeah, it's a really long time. All right, so it's been simmering here for an hour. The fruit chunks have uh, bloated a little bit and have worn down. So you can see all those little noodly bits sticking out. So yeah, looks pretty good. Smells all right. Uh, let's give it a try. 
honestly, there's not really a whole lot of flavor in here. Uh, the melon does give a texture. The rindish bit has like a nice chew to it. And the, uh, the little pulpy bits are a little bit like noodles. It, it reminds me of like bean thread noodles, uh, which I think are made out of like mung beans. Doesn't have much flavor either, but it does have like a, a good kind of like toothsome texture to it. So texture is nice. Uh, the seeds in there are actually pretty good. They've got like a little nutty taste and also uh, a nice texture as well. But the, the flavor isn't there. This tastes like something that you would eat if you're sick. It's very, very mild. I imagine it's pretty easy on the stomach. It's very like, you know, it's like warm and comforting, but super mild. I think like if you have like food poisoning, this would be a good thing to eat. Okay, so how about those seeds? In here I have, I don't know, what is that? Like a third of a cup of the seeds. I remove them dried them, put them inside this glass, and now to uh, aid in the roasting process, I'm going to toss with a little bit of olive oil. That's probably too much. Great. Salt. Whoa. How about that much? Also probably too much. It's fine. It's going to be great. Yep, I might end up deep frying these things with the amount of oil that I put in here, but you know what? That's okay too. Okay, that's gonna go in there for. I don't know. Let's see how long it takes. It's at 325 degrees in there, and these things are just like blowing up everywhere. Ah! <laughs> yeah, so I think I might need to uh, take them out. As you can see here, a lot of them exploded. Actually, if you want to take a look inside my oven, you can see all of them all over the bottom of my oven. If you actually <laughs> find one of these things and attempt to do this yourself, um, put something over the top. Maybe uh, do it at a lower heat than uh, I did. What's interesting though is you see like that inside bit. If the skin is very, very thin on these which is probably why they all exploded. And inside you can see like the little kernel. And that little kernel looks like almost like a little peanut in there. That's really good. Kind of like if you took popcorn and a sunflower seed and you kind of combine them together. It's like popcorn but like a little more nutty tasting. And the seeds in the soup kind of work, but honestly, they're getting like a little bit lost in there. They're good, but, you know, I think this kind of like highlights what's tasty about the seeds. If you want to try shark fin soup, because you've never had it before, and you want to do it like ethically, or if you really miss it, then this is a good way to do it. You know, save the sharks, let the sharks swim free and all that, and instead, kill the squash. there's going to be a preview at the end of this video, so don't go anywhere. I just want to give a big shout out to all of the mega contributors over on Patreon. Dr. Torgman, AltPod, FoodToLive.com, and the channel Smarter Every Day. Patreon is how this channel happens, so if you want to find out more about how you can contribute and help this channel grow, do click on the link in the description below or the one that's floating around me right now. I also have t-shirts for sale. This is the latest one, the Mandrake Root shirt, which is available on my website, also in the description below. Uh, this is not a huge channel. I'm trying to make it big. Leaving a comment or liking, subscribing, sharing, anything you could do, guys, does help me out quite a lot. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.